we will rebuild. We will pick up the shattered pieces of our lives and their work and continue to move forward. Together we will be stronger than the bastards who did this to us, and we will not let them succeed. Right now, I am in constant communication with the authorities who are investigating the attack. As soon as I hear anything conclusive, I will let you know. In the meantime, Frank and the rest of the security team will be working tirelessly to ensure that this company, that all of you, remain safe and secure. If you have any questions, or if you simply feel the need to talk, do not hesitate to come to me. My door is always open. So... Uh... Of course, that's the official stance. on the other floor. He must be up on the, uh, yeah, he must be up on the next floor. I thought he was down here on the second floor, but I guess not. Okay, my bad. Sorry, folks. <laughs> so here's, uh, Denzel Mitchell's office, but I think I want to see Brugger's first, um, just to check into that, uh, the report that he was talking about regarding the patient X. There we go. Nine, six, four, two. An event. Oh, this is very funny. He's got his password written down here. Yeah, real, real secure. Good security, yeah. So, Eclipse is his password. I have a drift on my right joystick for some reason. I want to have to check the calibration. That's why sometimes the screen slides. In case anybody out there is wondering. It's not really me doing it. Uh, so, from Andrea Van Weasel, uh, late night coffee break, uh, Brugger's original message to her was, Andrea, you gotta tell me, what the hell was that the other night? First of all, I had no clue you were interested, and no idea you were still in the lab, but when I went to put the extra no-pose away and caught you reaching into the freezer, well, needless to say, it was a very pleasant surprise. Thank God Rosalini didn't walk in on us. And Andrea replied, I guess I'm just full of surprises. Smile. <laughs> uh, so she also was uh, having her hand in the till, so to speak. Um, and here's one from Pritchard to everybody in the company about security again. But this one's different than the other one that we read back at the factory. Uh, a little bit different. Uh, so he's saying, important as you are no doubt aware, terrorism is on the rise in this city. If we, we in the IT department are working day and night to keep this company safe from outside attack, but you are making the job harder every time you fail to follow the most basic of network security rules. Which is why I must now remind all of you to lock your computer screen the moment you step away from it. Change your password every six weeks in keeping with network protocols. Never write down your password or give it to anyone else unless he has systems administration authority. Surf the internet only when you are in the safety and comfort of your own home. Simple rules, people. Let's try to follow them. <laughs> Which nobody is doing, obviously. <laughs> Which is also probably kind of a comment on our modern world. Um, here's a new ebook. Uh, composite study 07121969. Final test results. Oh, this was the report that, uh, that Brugger had emailed to Rosalini. Um, initial variables test conditions. Biomatrix Composite 1 was created using the R7 biochip design, which in turn uses the PDOT cluster array originally developed by Darrow Industries. 
Biomatrix Composite 2 was created using the X1 biochip design, which uses the PDOT cluster array developed by M. Reed et al., and, and incorporates the mutagenic co chemical composition first revealed in her patient X study. Tissue samples were taken from both composites were tested every seven days for rejection markers routinely associated with the onset of DDS, Darrow Deficiency Syndrome. Observations. Within three weeks of testing, Composite 1 exhibited low levels of cytotoxic M and DDSY enzymes commonly associated with the onset of rejection syndrome. The quantity of these enzymes increased as expected with 20 cc of neuroposane being administered in week 5 to break down glial tissue buildup around the biochip cluster. Composite 2, on the other hand, showed no sign of either enzyme appearing until week 6. At this point, trace levels of CM were detected, but disappeared in subsequent weeks. This leads me to hypothesize that the enzymes were actually a byproduct of the formation of newly extruded neural tissue compatible with the original matrix forming around the PDOT cluster. Asterisk. And the asterisk refers to additional, as a footnote, additional tests must be conducted to confirm this. Luckily, David informs me that new tissue from patient X has become available in recent months. Which might lead us to wonder, why is the tissue from patient X so hard to come by, and who is it, and all that sort of stuff. Another ebook, Tomorrow's Man, the Hugh Darrow story, Turning Points. Darrow's father, Sir Martin Darrow, media mogul and founder of Picus Communications, enrolled him in the prestigious St. Cliff School and later the Stowe School. A natural athlete, Hugh was the captain of football, rugby, union, and cricket teams. But beyond these sports, he found school to be boring and unchallenging, and opted not to enroll in college after graduation. His personal interest in designing and building computer-controlled mechanical devices, a crude robot at age 10, a makeshift robotics lab at 16, finally led him to the world's first Robot Wars competition in 1994. He failed to win, but while discussing design ideas with other robotics experts at the competition, he heard about human motion studies being carried out at Stanford University, aimed at designing better prosthetic devices for amputees. Darrow extended his stay in the USA to meet with several biomechatronic researchers. And since we're on the trail of this uh, neuroposing thief, uh, might be worthwhile to check out this. Not sure. And whose office did it go to? To Andrea Von Weasel. You know, yeah, the lady who had her hand in the freezer. <laughs> and obviously decided to use sex to distract the person who discovered her, Kruger. Uh, so here's another ebook. The Bell Tower Way, Corporate Background Brief. The Bell Tower Group provides a maximum spectrum private military security solution for every need. The company was incorporated in 1997, beginning life as a security consultancy and close protection bodyguard agency. Currently with offices in Afghanistan, Bahrain, uh, China, Iraq, Kenya, India, and the United States. Our headquarters in England is a hardened skyscraper with all the capabilities of a military base situated in the Lund London Sink, an area of reclaimed land close to the River Th Thames. Other key facilities include a maritime base on the U.S. Gulf Coast and a training facility in Bangalore, India. Bell Tower services are tailored for international clients, including governments, international agencies, and the corporate sector. It is also a registered and active UN contractor. We provide specialist security and risk management solutions to counter extreme threats, along with exfiltration, KNR, threat neutrality operations, and quick react symphonic defenses. So, uh, okay, no, nothing else on the desk. Oh, wait, here we go. Credit chips, okay. Uh, yeah. Her computer is unlocked, so. <clears throat> now, this is from Pritchard directly to Andrea. Uh, a little detective work. Greetings, Shine Ferret. Shine Ferret. Nuclear 3 R Snakes got an assignment for you. Hmm. So these are their screen names. It's come to my attention that someone has been stealing neuroposane around here for quite a while. You know that stuff costs a fortune, so I suspect someone's selling it on the black market. 
We need to get to the bottom of this and bring it to David before Jensen does. Kind of wondering why, but anyway. Feeling up to a little late night detective work? I've got an Intellicam that's rigged to record while it's inside the lab's freezer, but it'll look strange if I get caught in there placing it. You, on the other hand, are always full of surprises. You up for it? <clears throat> so, perhaps that's why she had her hand inside the freezer, putting the camera that Frank gave her in there. On the other hand, uh, it also sounds like maybe she's been fooling around with Frank, too, so who knows exactly what her story is. Really don't know anything about her yet. And then here's the, her, the original email that we already read from Bruger to her about catching her, running into her. Um, here's an email from Athene to everybody in the company regarding overtime policy. It has come to my attention that many of you are logging overtime hours as we continue to work hard to meet deadlines. Because of this, I would like to remind everyone about Seraph Industries' overtime policies. For anyone exceeding 8 hours of work in a single workday and or 40 hours of work in a regular work week, you are entitled by law to one and a half times your regular rate of pay for all overtime hours worked. But we'd like you to consider an alternative option. A one-for-one -one exchange of overtime for paid vacation hours once project deadlines have been reached. Please inform your unit supervisor which option you prefer no later than Friday, 11 a.m. If we do not hear from you by then, we will assume the second option applies. Thank you for your time and dedication to keeping Seraph Industries alive. Because, of course, what they're trying to do, they're going to assume the one-to-one the one -to -one exchange and, and clock it into vacation time uh, so that they don't have to pay people the one-and-a-half rate of pay. Uh, and who knows with their vacation time, I mean, if it doesn't roll over year to year, they would just lose it anyway. <laughs> Which is quite possible. Yeah. Especially for a corporation that evidently is facing some financial problems, as this one evidently is. So now we can check out Mitchell's office. Since Athene asked us to. Okay, uh... Hmm. Okay, this is a different chapter. Uh, Global Politics Review, 2026 edition. Chapter 7, Facing the Dragon. China casts a long shadow. Since the 2000s, the Chinese bloc has seen a steady climb towards superpower super status, supplanting the USA as the world's economic engine and most sophisticated military force. Marked growth in many areas of industry have made the People's Republic a major player in many fields, notably in the emerging technology of human augmentation. Without the regulations imposed on human trials by other nations, the PRC have been fast-tracking their augmentation research. Many fear that China's actions may grant them a monopoly and thus strengthen their position still further. However, despite technological advances, China's attitudes toward human rights and the environment have not progressed, and rumors of atrocities against both people and the planet are rife, but confirmation of these statements is difficult to obtain, given the PRC's iron grip on their nation's media. Okay, so... Here's his pocket secretary. <coughs> so, no subject, but this is from Shinefair at hackernet.detroit. Okay, that's good. Uh, and Shinefair was uh, Andrea's, uh, Andrea's uh, screen name when Frank contacted her. 